So, I'm pretty sure everyone remembers 2019, when a Facebook meme turned into a movement, when someone said, they can't stop all of us. And everyone was suddenly all into the conspiracy theories surrounding Area 51. It had turned into a whole thing, when about 150 people showed up in the desert, not to trespass, but just for the sake of it. With over a thousand people attending the music festivals organized nearby, I'm pretty sure you now have an idea about what we'll be covering today. 12 movies that revolve around Area 51. So buckle up and get ready for an exciting ride. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Independence Day, 1996. On the 2nd of July, 1996, saucers, 15 miles in diameter, were seen in major cities worldwide, three of them being New York City, Los Angeles, and Washington, D.C. These saucers have been deployed by an extraterrestrial mothership that has entered the Earth's orbit. David, a technician, decodes a signal, making him realize that it's a countdown for a synchronized alien attack. He and his ex-wife, Constance, alert President Thomas Whitmore. He orders the evacuation of the cities in the U.S., but it is a little too late, leading to the destruction of the cities and millions of deaths. On the 2nd of July, failed counterattacks were made as they were stopped by the force fields of the alien warships. Captain Hiller then manages to capture one of the aliens that are attacking the human military and its bases and manages to get it transported to Area 51, where the president has just landed. It's also revealed that the government has known about aliens since 1947. The alien being examined by the chief scientist, Dr. Oaken, invades him telepathically and launches a psychic attack on Whitmore. I guess someone should have known the spell occlumency. I hope there are some Harry Potter fans here, or this would make no sense. After the alien is killed, Whitmore reveals that because their minds were linked, he knows the aliens plan to obliterate humans and harvest its natural resources. Having done this to other planets too, Whitmore, although disciplined, although disinclined, authorizes a trial attack on the saucer above Houston. The ship remains unharmed, but the city is destroyed. On the 4th of July, David creates a computer virus to disrupt the operating systems of the alien shields. Now comes the difficult part, uploading it to the mothership. Will they succeed in doing so? Is this pressure of the impending doom on humanity going to linger over the heads of the people in charge? Directed by Roland Emmerich. This movie is truly a roller coaster ride, with so much action that there are no dull moments. The actors are brilliant. I mean, come on, it stars Will Smith. Showdown at Area 51, 2007. The movie is based on two aliens who crash land on Earth. Jude is our alien hero while Cronin is the bad alien guy who wants to murder every human in his vicinity, which currently is Area 51. The movie also suggests that the real Area 51 is located somewhere in Missouri. The human protagonist is Jake Townsend, who is an ex-Area 51 guard. Alex, his younger brother, is currently the top military guard and has found himself in this alien dance battle, except for the fact that dance is a metaphor for death and murder. Jake trespasses into Area 51, looking for his brother, but is instead found by Jude, who needs his help with a weapon called the Omega Seed that will annihilate the inhabitants of Earth. And all this for what? Well, to steal and harvest our pollution and the remnants of whatever is left after the humans are wiped out. Jake and his ex-girlfriend Monica's task is to put the Omega Rod into the Omega Hole, which will halt the Omega Seed from becoming the destructive weapon it is supposed to be while holding off Cronin, the Omega Centurion. Will they succeed in doing so? or just become one of the insignificant dead people while the Omega race takes over the Earth? Though this film is not the best film ever made, it's also not something that a lot of people despise. Boring. It's one of those, it's so bad it's good movies, which has its funny moments. It's not overly complicated. You can watch it the way Jake does most things in the movie, with a beer. You don't have to pay too much attention to the movie, and you'll end up enjoying it. Paul. 2011, Graham and Clive are two British comic book and science fiction enthusiasts traveling to the States to attend Comic-Con. They are also on a road trip through the southwestern U.S. to visit UFO sites on a highway in a remote desert. They are at a diner when they see a car crash and decide to help. Little did they know that the help they are providing is to an alien named Paul, who is being chased by Zoil, a special agent of Secret Service. Zoil informs his female superior, who has a pretty contradictory name, by the way, the big guy 
and he's closing in on Paul. The rest of the story is about Graham and Clive trying to help Paul get back to his planet. They are joined by Ruth, a one-eyed girl whose blindness is healed by Paul, and Tara, the woman who rescued Paul when he crashed on Earth 60 years ago and killed her dog, accidentally of course. They are attacked by rookies sent by the big guy, who try to catch Paul, but just end up killing themselves. Everyone now reaches the Devil's Tower National Monument, where they use fireworks. Yes, you heard that right, fireworks, to signal Paul's mothership. Also, Alexa, play firework by Katy Perry. But the big guy arrives. Will our sweet alien be rescued, or will he end up in a science lab and be used as a guinea pig? There's also a little twist as the ending of the film nears. Directed by Greg Matola, the film has made countless members of the audience laugh till their stomachs ached and their faces turn red. It has a cohesive plot. It's definitely a sci-fi for the nerds. Also, Paul is a well-written character and is brought to life by CGI. Also, people have started endearing our little alien friend Paul after watching the movie. Fifty-one, two thousand eleven. When. Due to public and political pressure, a group of journalists and their camera crew are granted limited access to Area 51. Things go south fairly quickly. The aliens manage to escape their containments, and what comes after is pure chaos, as the aliens start to attack both the military personnel and the journalists. Now, they must fight for their lives as well as stop the aliens from escaping the base and reaching the world outside. Will mere humans be able to survive in a battle against multiple types of extraterrestrials? What kind of responsibility will they face when they know that the fate of the world lies in the hands of humans who look like they are no match against these aliens? Directed by Jason Connery, this film showcases that you don't need a huge budget to make entertaining sci-fi films. It's a fast-paced movie, and for many of you gore, or maybe vampires out there, it has a lot of blood. There's depth to the characters in the sense that you can feel something for them, making you like or hate them. It also stars the phenomenal actress, Rachel Miner, who is just a gem in any film she does. So check it out. Zero Dark Thirty, 2012. Maya, a CIA agent, has been assigned the task of finding the Al-Qaeda leader, Osama bin Laden. She, along with CIA officer Dan Fuller, attend black site interrogations being conducted on a detainee named Amar, who has suspected links to the 9-11 attacks. During the enhanced interrogation, he reveals the name of a personal courier for bin Laden, Abu Ahmed al-Kuwaiti. Another detainee intelligence connects the courier traffic between Abu Faraj Alibi and bin Laden by Abu Ahmed. Though in 2005, Faraj denies knowing about the courier in one of the scenes. Maya is shown briefing the SEAL Team 6 at Area 51 about the potential whereabouts of bin Laden. In 2009, Maya and her fellow officer Jessica travels to the U.S. base in Afghanistan, and Jessica is killed by a Jordanian doctor who was a triple agent highly placed in Al-Qaeda as he had detonated a suicide vest, killing other CIA officers as well. Maya is shared in interrogation by Thomas, an analyst, in which a Jordanian detainee claims he buried Abu Ahmed in 2001. Maya then learns Ibrahim Saeed traveled under the name of Abu Ahmed Al-Kuwaiti. Realizing the lead may be alive, she contacts Dan and speculates that the picture of Ahmed could have been his brother Habib, who was killed in Afghanistan, and they might look the same because of their beards and clothes, explaining Ahmed's death in 2001. How does all of this connect to Bin Laden? You know what to do to find out. Directed by Catherine Bigelow, the award-winning film is truly a masterpiece. Maya is a depiction of all the women who worked on the task of getting rid of Osama Bin Laden. It has a serious and realistic approach. It does a brilliant job of showcasing how difficult it is to survive in such warlike conditions where everything is a threat and no one can be trusted. It is a truly disturbing story about the fictionalized representation of Bin Laden with many nail-biting moments. Angry Video Game Nerd, the movie, 2014. In 1983, two million copies of E.T., the worst video game of all time, were dumped into a landfill outside of Alamogordo, New Mexico. Back to the present day, game executive Mandy of Cockburn Industries suggests to her bosses to create an intentionally bad sequel called E.T. 2. The angry video game nerd's reviews have led to the skyrocketing sales of poorly made video games. The nerd and his sidekick Cooper Folly are working on a game review. The nerd has become discouraged, as a part of his job at Game Cops is to promote and sell bad video games, and his fans continue to buy the games he warns them to stay away from. 
After some personal thought, the nerd decides to debunk the conspiracy theories surrounding the buried cartridges and promises to review the original game if they are true. He is accompanied by Cooper and Mandy. As they search for the creator of E.T., Howard Scott Warshaw, they find Dr. Zandor, who tells them that E.T.'s level design is the exact map of Area 51. He gave the code to Warshaw to exact revenge on the government for holding an alien hostage, who he was trying to free, which is why the government ordered the burial of the cartridge. Dr. Zandor had escaped into the metallic material Area 51, was researching to reconstruct the alien spaceship, replacing it with tinfoil. The rest of the story is the nerd trying to rescue the alien while they are chased by multiple enemies, especially a super being with the power to destroy all existence. Tune the movie in to see if the alien will ever leave Earth and what will happen to the nerd. Directed by Kevin Finn and James Rolfe, it's a sci-fi comedy film, which has also been described by the fans as entertaining so bad, it's badass. The film has retro vibes, and it feels like it takes you back to the cheesy 80s movie era. James, the man who the movie is for, has been adored and supported by his fan. It's heartwarming to see a man had a dream and wanted to make a movie about his own over-the-top character, and he did it. No! No, Yona! No! Yona! No! Area 51, 2015. After three close friends, Reed, Darren, and Ben attend a party together, Reed disappears. And when Darren and Ben leave, they see him standing on a dark and secluded road. This event is the beginning of Reed's fascination with Area 51 and aliens, and his plans to infiltrate the base to uncover its secrets. This obsession leaves him estranged from his family, and he ends up losing his job. So along with another conspiracy theorist, Yelena, and his two best friends, they devise a plan to sneak into the base using various equipment, such as signal jammers and night vision goggles. Yelena's father, who worked at Area 51, advises the group to investigate a man who works in an important position. They manage to steal the man's badge and use it to enter the base while Ben waits for them outside. They find various alien substances and a spacecraft that only Reed can enter or interact with. When they reach level S4, which holds the most sensitive information, they are swarmed by guards and Darren is separated from his friends. He manages to elude the guards and just manages to escape a predatory alien. Meanwhile, Reed and Yelena have discovered a cavern-like place under the base. All hell is about to break loose from here on. So make sure to watch the series of unfortunate events that are about to happen. Directed by Oren Pelly, this movie resonates with the found footage movie fans. It gives you a great peek into people's minds as to what they imagine Area 51 could end up being. And this one, by far, is a pretty extreme take on the usual topic. Spoiler alert, don't go in expecting a happy ending. Independence Day, Resurgence, 2016. 20 years after the war in 1996, the UN has founded ESD, Earth Defense System, and its purpose is to alert Earth against extraterrestrial threats. Area 51 is now the headquarters, and the ESD has bases set up on the Moon, Mars, and Rhea. ESD director David Levinson meets with warlord Dikembe Mbutu and Dr. Catherine Marceau in an African state and travels to a landed alien saucer. They discover the aliens were drilling before and then sending distress signals before they were defeated. It's also revealed that former U.S. President Whitmore, Dr. Oaken, and Mbutu are telepathically linked to the aliens' collective consciousness. Later, a large mothership, and large as in 3,000 miles in diameter, appears. Responding to the distress call, it destroys the defense systems of Earth, lands over the North Atlantic Ocean, and starts drilling toward the Earth's core for fuel, which would obviously destroy the planet. It is also revealed that the aliens are a hive mind, and their queen has bigger plans than just drilling. The film will quickly take a darker turn, with sacrifices and figuring battles with the alien queen. Will humanity be able to survive this second attempt at its obliteration, or be wiped out like Bug? Directed by Ronald Emmerich. It's the sequel to the first movie in this video. It has great special effects and a storyline that feels like a natural continuation of the first. It's a fast-paced movie that will give you no time to get bored. Though Will Smith doesn't return for the sequel, it gives the other actors a chance to take the spotlight. Many fans believe that Liam Hemsworth played the best role he had played until 2016 in this movie. It's definitely a sci-fi thriller with twists and turns and a great speech, along with some comic relief to balance it all out. Escape from Planet Earth, 2013. On Planet Bob, Scorch Supernova, a glory seeker, along with his older nerdy brother Gary, 
works at the organization, Bassa. Gary is told by Lena, the head of Bassa, that Scorch will be sent to the Dark Planet, that's what the Bobbians call Earth, due to an SOS call. Gary quits his job in frustration when Scorch accepts the mission without even asking for his approval. Gary is frustrated because anyone who goes to Earth never return. He goes home and watches the mission on live TV with his wife and son. Scorch lands at a convenience store and is taken to Area 51. Later, due to a change of heart, Gary decides to rescue his brother and lands in the same place and is taken to Area 51 as well. Shanker Shanker, the general of the U.S. Army, uses his girlfriend Lena to have himself sent the most powerful energy source in the galaxy, called Blubonium, and Gary is put in a cell hall where he meets other captured aliens, who have been forced to invent things so that Shanker can sell them. In exchange for the release, which isn't time-specific, Shanker later reveals he shall end life on all other planets, because his father had been accidentally killed by the spaceship of a trio of gray aliens. The Blubonium had been broken accidentally by Scorch and Gary, and had been ordered to fix it in exchange for his brother being released from freezing chamber. But he rigs the ray, causing it to malfunction and free everyone. As they try to escape, things go downhill. As Shanker now has Scorcher's robotic suit, how will they escape this peril and disable Shanker in the process? Well, you'd be surprised with what friends and family can help you conquer. Directed by Cal Bunker, this film has all the components that make for a good kids film. Sci-fi, comedy, adventure, and alien. It's a sweet, warm-hearted family movie that's full of color. The characters are hilarious and well-made, thanks to the talented voice artists. The graphics are top-notch, and the storyline is interesting. Planet 51, 2009. This movie is about Captain Charles T. Chuck Baker, an astronaut who lands on a planet that, to his shock, is inhabited. Planet 51 is inhabited by green extraterrestrials who are peaceful, and their society looks like the 1950s U.S., although, due to their lack of knowledge in astronomy, they believe the whole universe extends for about 500 miles. Lim, a teenage alien who works part-time, is convinced by Chuck to help him reach his spacecraft before it leaves for Earth in three days, leaving him stranded. General Grawl, General Grawl, paranoid, believes that Chuck is an alien invader who is trying to turn their planet's people into zombies and starts a manhunt using the Planet 51 army. After numerous adventures and threats to Chuck, he is eventually captured by Grawl and taken to Base 9, which is their planet's equivalent of Area 51. Lim, along with his friends in Chuck's rover, decides to rescue Chuck from Base 9. They manage to open a gate and go to the underground base, but Grawl reveals that he has rigged the place to explode. Will anyone make it out alive? Will Chuck ever get back to Earth? Directed by Jorge Blanco, this is the freshest take on a movie that is an animated sci-fi comedic adventure. It feels like the aliens have made this movie, and it's funny to see the movie from a perspective that would make a human an alien to a different planetary civilization. It's a great movie to watch, and is kid-friendly. And of course, you know it'll be hilarious when Dwayne Johnson is the voice actor for Chuck. By the end of the movie, it'll certainly leave you wanting more. The Area 51 Incident, 2022 When Doug, director of operations of Britain's Area 51, arranges a tour for his son Trent and Jenny, who is a graduate of their facility, he is very excited. He wants to show them the team's latest experiment, which is a series of wormholes. They are curious to know what is on the other side, as they continue to experiment on a wormhole that's reached its critical point. It creates a rift that allows a race of deadly extraterrestrials to invade our world rapidly, taking over Area 51. They slaughter and eat anyone who's unlucky enough to cross their path in the entirety of Britain, eventually leading to the widening of the wormhole to let the mother of all aliens in. Directed, edited, co-composed, co-produced, and co-written by Reese Frake Waterfield. The movie has some nicely designed aliens. The music choices, especially towards the end of the film, are great as they get more and more haunting and horrifying, adding to the intensity of the climax of the film. It's chaotic in a good way, though it has failed in one aspect, which is giving the audience the time to connect with the characters in a way where you feel something for them. The aliens, though, are kind of a crossover between the mist and alien. Groom Lake, 2002. The film opens with a tow truck driving across the desert roads when mystical lights that look like Aurora Borealis shimmer in the sky. Dietz, the truck driver, climbs on the back of the truck and yells at the lights, 
Take me, you son of a witch. Then we move to a couple who are enjoying their last days together and therefore heading to the groom lake because the woman, Kate, is dying. But little do they know, they shall become witnesses to the alien activity around the area and come across people who are strangely obsessed because of the influence of the alien, as Kate and Andy hope to seek proof that there is life elsewhere and that the one place that may have some answers. Things get more and more bizarre. Directed by William Shatner, fans believe this one to be a film that partially mocks sci-fi movies. Ultimately, out of all the movies we have covered today, this might be the least favorite of the audience. So, as it is based around Area 51, it has been included in the list. But we won't ask you to go out of your way to watch this one. Marvelous Verdict. So, this was all for today's expedition of exploring movies based around Area 51. It has truly been like being in a car blindfolded, not knowing where the next movie might take us. We jump from terrorist to alien, to sweet animated movies with an independent film somewhere in the middle of it all. And though the journey was unpredictable, it did come to an end, like all things must, just like this video, but only for now. And a special shout out to any of the conspiracy theorists watching. Drop down your thoughts in the comment section. Until next time. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.